In this Torah portion, we start in Leviticus. And the word is Vayikra. And Leviticus is the how-to manual of the tabernacle. In Old Testament times, to approach Yah, there was always a blood sacrifice and a priest needed. Today, you and I approach Yah through our high priest, Jesus, Messiah, who is also our sacrifice for sin, the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. Whoever submits to what Yah has done in Christ Jesus and turns from a way of life that self is no longer the focus, who recognizes how far from the mark that Yah made for all to follow and struggles with Yah, you are Israel. Yah is known by many names, and jealousy is one of them. And that's in Exodus 34, chapter 34. Chapter 1. Chapter 1, Vaikra, speaks of burnt offerings. Burnt offerings go way back in Noah's time. In Genesis chapter 8, Noah and his family, they got out of the ark after the flood, and Noah built an altar and burned offerings on it. The lesson that you can take from these chapters is how to be set apart from all things, to be set apart for Yah and only Him, nothing else, and no one else, yet just Yah. We do well if we learn this lesson set apart to the worship and the keeping covenant that is acceptable to Yah. An animal of the herd, of the flock, or a bird, no wild animals are mentioned. The life of the animal, which was a bull, a sheep, or goat, or bird, were laid down, they were sacrificed before, before man in order to approach God. Man didn't choose. Yah made this choice. What of what animal and the way to approach him. When you and I become familiar with the order, the order in which Yah chooses. For example, in Genesis chapter 22, Abraham built an altar to the place God had told Abraham of and laid the wood in order just the way Yah told him. And Isaac was bound there upon the wood. Yah has a specific order. If we become familiar with this, we can see Yah's great and mighty works in all 66 books of the Bible, in uh, our lives, and in the future of things to come. Because Yah never changes. There's a verse in Malachi 
chapter 3, verse 6, it says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. We are the ones that need to change. The animal that was chosen for the burnt offering was supposed to be pure and whole, with no defects, to be a substitute for sinful man. And the person who offered to the Lord God had to lay hands on it, identifying with the death of the sacrifice, animal as a substitute. The laying of the hands is mentioned throughout uh, Yah's word. For example, in Acts chapter 8, when Peter and John heard that Samaria received the word of God, they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. In 1 Timothy for chapter 5, it warns not to be so eager to lay hands on the elders that wanted to be reinstated who have been uh, publicly rebuked for being careless and maintaining sin, entertaining it in their lives. So this burnt offering was brought to the door of the tabernacle. And then, not, but not only that, it was skinned and then it was cut in pieces by the person that offered it that it may be acceptable before the Lord. This was a free will offering to assured acceptance of the sacrifice that was needed to approach Yah. Here, the burnt offering is to make atonement. The uh, root word for atonement is to cover. The life of the, a sacrifice official animal substituted for the death penalty of sinful human beings. Now we learned that Yah dwelt between the wings of the cherubims on the Ark of the Covenant. Inside the gold box were the laws given to Moses by Yah on Mount Sinai. As the high priest sprinkled blood on the lid of the ark, it symbolically concealed God's eyes from the law to make atonement. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it makes it clear. Verse 21, For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The burnt offerings focus on the flesh of the animal, so not so much on the blood. For that, that is on, on chapter 4 through 5. And the sin offering that ended all sin offering was that blood that atoned for human rebellion in Jesus Messiah. The blood and death of an innocent life was given on behalf of the guilty person. In Revelation chapter 1, describes it just right and i'm gonna start with verse five and and from jesus christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that love us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever. And this offering was made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. The fire on the altar was not lit by any man. God lit the fire. Yah 
would send his own fire to consume the sacrifice as a sign of his presence and acceptance. When the two sons of Aaron lit the offering themselves, their fire was profane, and Yah consumed them. Elijah knew about God's fire. In 1 King 18, chapter 18, Yah consumed the uh, altar. When Elijah challenged the 400 piece of bull. In Exodus 40, chapter 40, when the, the tabernacle was finally done, the camp set the tabernacle up in the cloud by day, and Yah's fire was by night. These are all examples of Yah's fire. And in Hebrews chapter 12, it says it the best. It says, Wherefore we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptable with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Chapter 2. Grain Offerings Any person can present a grain offering as an offering to the Lord. Yah also mentions salt. It was very important back then. Preserves food. It was a form of money. It was used as a weapon on the enemy to destroy the fields and crops. It was used to seal an agreement in Numbers 18. And in Matthew's chapter 5, you and I are the salt of the earth. The grain offering wasn't an offering offered on its own. To approach Yah, blood was needed. The grain offering was never offered alone to Yah. Anyone can offer to show devotion to Yah, rich or poor, no one is excluded. In verse 11, it says, uh, it must be unleavened and no honey. These two ingredients make bread sour and all mingled with oil. Oil, symbol of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was full with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was given to Jesus by Yah without measure. Verse 14, frankincense. Now, frankincense is gum resin, resin from a tree, a symbol of prayer. For those who were uh, impoverished, uh, dirt poor, God made a way for them to approach him by bringing frankincense. We are made new by the hard work that the Lord did leading up to the cross. And we are made of pure ingredients. That is why it is possible to influence others. We are like a breath of fresh air, a different taste. In these chapters, you can see the Lord, the bread of life that was filled with the Holy Spirit that taught us to pray. The Lord was the burnt offering and he atoned, he covered us so that, may, that we may approach Yah. He was our sin offering. He took away the sin. The Lord was our trespass offering. For the law could not do. He is our peace offering. And he brought, he brought us so close to the Lord that we can eat at his table. Leviticus 
by Ikra, and he gathered.